Hi there, friend. My name is John Werner. I used to be a part of the largest cult in the United States. After studying the Bible, Christian history, and ministry, I set my sights on confronting the problematic nature of white evangelicalism in the United States. In 2019, I published my first book as a first step in addressing the subtle issues of this complex system. This podcast will continue that work under the same title. Welcome to The Cult of Christianity. Welcome to the Cult of Christianity season two finale. I have my favorite, I would actually just say my best friends, I think is a fair statement to say, Chris and Lily. Chris, say hi. Hello. I'm Chris. Lily, you heard my voice shut before. I'm up, sorry. Chris, shut up. <laughs> Lily, say hi. All right. So in case y'all can't tell yet, this is going to be a very relaxed, uh, (laughs) very calm, collected, uh, professional. (laughs) No, fuck all that. We are going to have a uh, party because obviously I deal with some like pretty intense topics on the show and have some good discussions with guests. And there's definitely a time and place for that. But uh, the first season when it ended, I didn't get to do like a fun finale, really. I just kind of had a finale where I had just gotten in a car wreck and got to say, hey, guys, I'm alive, but I feel like I'm dying. So here's what happened this season. And that was kind of it. And that was a bummer because I, I would have rather had more fun than that. So I'm kind of treating this as a season one and season two finale. I, I have the most frequent guests on And they're my friends. And so if you're not into like vulgar humor or like language, uh, you can fuck right off because (laughs) this episode is going to be uh, pretty, pretty fun for us. Uh, I totally understand if that's your viewpoint. But for me, uh, this is for me and for fun. So we're going to do it that way. Um, Let's start by saying uh, just hi first. So uh, Lily, hi, how are you doing? Oh, how you doing? I'm doing good. I was actually just wondering if um, the people that are listening know that this is a visual recording, if if you are going to actually right. say so that. Right, so here's the thing. In, yeah, thank you for saying that. I was going to mention that. So hypothetically, this if you want to see video of the three of us, uh, you can go on Spotify and there will be a video there. Now, if you happen to go to Spotify and there is no video here, that means I couldn't figure it out and it was too hard to edit and I gave up. So (laughs) hypothetically, listen, Lily, (laughs) I drive traffic to Spotify because that's where the subscribers are and I need to get them to pay money to me. So, uh, so it'll be on Spotify potentially. Isn't that fun? (laughs) But uh, it, the audio will be everywhere you get you get your podcast. Good question, Lily. <laughs> no, I asked all of the oh. questions. Thank you. <clears throat> you really do. Chris, uh, you just got back from vacation. Uh, you saw Lord, didn't you? I did. <gasps> you not, saw our, Lord. not our Lord. I saw Lord. You didn't see the Lord. <laughs> no, I saw my Lord. I saw my Lord. Um, Wait, that's so yeah, cool. She, uh, yeah, it was really fun. She um, apparently woke up that morning with a cold, and she still pulled through the show. Um, I guess she probably made her sound even vocal. better. Um, yeah, especially her vocal style, yeah. having like that a really deep voice and stuff. And you could not tell; like it was, she seemed fine. But she made comments a few times about how she was going to pass out as soon as the show was over. And I was like, I feel kind of bad for you because <laughs> I've done <laughs> oh, that before in a much yeah. smaller space, and I can't imagine doing it in an arena. So yeah, um, I love. But it was good. Yeah, it was really fun. Um, what's that guy? Her, if her anyone album. is, if uh, anyone oh, yeah. is watching the video, I'm gonna show off my beautiful champagne bottle before I open it. You're drinking is this a barefoot. barefoot bubbly? Is that barefoot? It is. But listen, it says something nice on it somewhere. If I can find it, hold on. Oh, it's about gay people. I remember getting that. It's about gay people. It says they're people, and I was like, "Yes, I agree." <laughs> <laughs> so I bought it. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop it open and, and try to pop it open on the mic. We'll see what happens. Oh yeah, ASMR. Oh gosh, I, I didn't really think this, this through. Room, so I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'm drinking oh a delicious Syrah that I found at Fred Meyer today. Do you have Fred Meyer in that, Georgia? That's pretty. 
It is no. really pretty. <laughs> you, okay, Fred Meyer's really aggressive cool. now. I, I I have I have Roku Jin. Um, mm, cool. Which is really good gin. I'm I want to try some. I don't know if I've have I had that. I don't think so. Not with me. Yeah. Well, that's the only. I just, <laughs> like, I just discovered it. Nice. I uh. Yeah. You know me. Gin is my favorite, but I go to like Bombay and Hendrix most often. Yeah. Usually I'm a Bombay like person. But... What? Someone once told me that gin was a sad drink. No. What? They're wrong. <laughs> yeah, I was like, they also gave no explanation. They were like, I think it's a it's sad like, drink. It's like calling tequila like a happy drink. Okay. It's like, well, that just depends on the mood of whatever's happening. All right, here we I go. I hate tequila. It like even the smell of it makes me nauseous. <laughs> Is it because <laughs> you got really sick after drinking a ton of she- tequila? You would think, but no, I've just never liked tequila. Oh. Yeah, that's really interesting. I just yeah. John, are you okay? <laughs> He's like the noodliest arms. I'm just, I'm, I'm both like excited and nervous. (laughs) So it's just you gotta just do it because this is terrible radio. You just have the noodliest for for the listeners. For the listeners out there, yes, John is. Yeah, yeah. John has spent the last like sixty seconds (laughs) noodling at this champagne bottle, trying to get the cork to pop without exploding in his face. Yeah, he's been like basically wrapping his legs around it, doing his best. It looks like it's dripping yeah. a lot. Yeah, it's the condensation on the bottle, which is also contributing to the difficulty <laughs> in opening uh, the port. Yeah. All right. Cheers, y'all. Well, cheers. Cheersies. Um, cheers. Is that yeah, a barefoot? barefoot bubbly or, sucks. I'm sorry. Oh. Um, <laughs> say what? Is Chris Reed drinking a white claw? Yes, I am. You can't go wrong with the claw. Ain't no law. No, you can't. Ain't no law. Ain't um, no law. So, is this first off, an alcohol advertisement? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's. I think no. what we've all learned. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like. Wait a second. Is it legal to advertise? It probably is. You can make up an advertisement on a podcast. Surely, it's just a recording. It's just a recording of people doing things. Did yeah. I tell you that my uh, mom? I love how that's your standard for what's legal. Like, like if it's, <laughs> it's not hurting anybody, what could be wrong? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, but uh, before we get too far into this nonsense, um, yes. I want to thank people who listen to this podcast. I don't. I'm not sure how much I've talked to you two about it, but like, the podcast grew like crazy this season. Um, like my base o- audience, honestly, like tripled to quadrupled this year um that's people who listen every week um, and so it means a lot uh would have never guessed it and what's really cool is some of y'all you know do enough digging to find my my instagram or my facebook or whatever and send me nice messages so i thought i would read some of those nice messages and i'm sure you two can relate to some of what these people have said um because <laughs> they a lot of, a lot of people like to talk about their experiences in what felt like a cult um and uh it means a lot when people reach out so i kept all of these anonymous because people are obviously in different life situations so didn't want to call anybody out but if you're listening and you hear this i got your message thanks you're welcome and thanks again um and (laughs) and also uh if i if i missed if i missed your uh if I missed your, anyone's message, uh, I'm sorry. It wasn't intentional. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I might have seen it. I might not have. Um, but these are ones that I saw when I was just looking around. Uh, this one's short and sweet. It just says, Hi, I know this is super random, but your podcast hits home so much. I basically just left the Southern Baptist cult, and it makes me feel not alone. Mm-hmm. Cheers to uh, the Southern Baptist. We should drink in their honor. <laughs> yeah. Cheers to the ex-Southern Baptist. I hear you one, and I raise you one. Yes, absolutely. Um, here's another one. Uh, this podcast is really great and brings in so many perspectives. As a person with some religious trauma, I appreciate it and can definitely relate. You're, uh, all three of us have a, our fair share of religious trauma. So cheers to you. Plenty. Plenty to go cheers around. Cheers to the religious I trauma. Think. I really want to raise you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Also, some of these were like nice reviews that people put on uh, on Apple Podcasts. This one I know was one that uh, said, I was raised Christian, but not evangelical. My best friend was raised evangelical. So these things affect her so much. It is so fascinating to learn about this and have a better understanding. Amazing podcast. You're so well spoken. And I've already learned so much. Thanks. Uh, I'm glad I you learned. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I've, I've, I've learned a lot. So it makes me happy that we're all learning together. That's really cool. Cheers to you. I'm realizing I might get drunk really quick. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, just stop. you keep saying cheers and then taking a drink after every single thing you read. <laughs> Listen, I've got a bottle of champagne to myself. I mean, we gotta <laughs> go every chance we get. And my bed is actually probably like 20 feet away from me. So I'm good. <laughs> just don't uh, delete this at the end of the day <laughs> just lose everything <laughs> just drunkenly delete the whole thing hey so we need to actually do that again <laughs> oh gosh no this is, a, this is a one and done <laughs> if we don't get it now it's not happening oh man uh so let's see um this one's a bit longer but it was it meant a lot uh it said my beliefs and feelings, aversion to religion, despite feeling constantly pressured to believe in it, finally feel validated. I just listened to episode one and love it so far. I was seeking out a podcast on the topic after stumbling across a massive number of people claiming that yoga, astrology, and Enneagram are, quote, of the devil. And if you're Christian oh, and participating man. in them, you're practicing witchcraft and need to repent. Uh, I was so, and I was so annoyed yeah. and just needed to hear something that felt sane to me. And this is that. Um, I am familiar. I am very familiar. Yeah. yeah. Well, we have. Uh, I can tell you that astrology is bullshit. No, I'm just kidding. We won't go down that road. <laughs> me and Lily have a have a bit about me hating astrology. Yes, I know. Loving it. I'm and it's not much of a bit as it is a reality. <laughs> it's just reality. Just, and you guys are just constantly at each other's throats about this. <laughs> I just think that like, like many random things that you think and believe are just deeply wrong. And that's okay. And hey, I to you. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> cheers. Um, in all seriousness, uh, it it sucks when people will say stupid stuff like that. Yoga or enneagram or astrology are of the devil. Like that's that's silly. Um, yeah, I actually so did used to like. John, this is not all about you. This is not just your podcast. Lily, I want you to talk. Come on. <laughs> I just was gonna say. <laughs> I was just gonna say that, like, I actually have heard people say that like yoga does put you in positions to hear from the devil. Have you heard that? I haven't, oh, yeah. but I mean, isn't that, that doesn't, great? That's like maybe the most insane thing though, because like I could see someone being like, "Oh, the spiritualism of yoga is blah blah blah," but to be like, "Oh yeah, the position you're in, the you can <clears throat> listen." They're saying you can listen to the devil. Yeah, well, apparently well, like, there's like your, your, your soul to the is devil. more open. Yeah, your, your soul is more open <laughs> to hearing the devil. It, 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 what kind of weird beliefs about the devil the is door. that? Well, I like, want to know specifically was... what position that is, because that's my downward facing position. dog, obviously. Oh, yeah. I thought it was doggy. Downward facing dog. Yeah, yeah. Uh... <laughs> I thought it was downward facing doggy. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. It's not. Um, <laughs> But yeah, thanks for listening. Yeah, I again, like, it's, you know, it can be hard when people are, like, uh, pressuring you, like, this is the right way, and all these other ways are wrong. Like, I'm just happy when anyone can stumble across and be like, hey, there's actually, like, a bunch of different ways about thinking about all of this, and none of them are necessarily, like, wrong or bad, you know? Um, decide for yourself. So I'm, I'm glad you've been on that journey with me, because I didn't decide things for myself for a very long time. Um, so that's cool. All right. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, this is another. This is this one was way too kind. It said, um, "As someone surrounded by Christians throughout life, but unable to articulate my negative feelings towards it, this podcast gives me the words and stories to explain my feelings towards extreme religion. It is brave and thoughtful, and the only one of its kind. Thank you." Um, that means a lot. I especially saying it's only one of its kind. I I appreciate people's uniqueness, so it means a lot for someone to recognize my uniqueness. So thank you. Cheers. You are very unique. Cheers. 
That's, oh, that's an fact. understatement. <laughs> <laughs> here's um, to unique. Here's, here's another one. This one, I, I actually, I was joking that none of these were about you, but uh, this one is kind of about you. <laughs> um, about me? Uh, this, yeah, this person said, uh, I just listened to episode seven, which was the patriarchy one that you were on. And your wife, Chris, was also on that one. Um oh. And she's so she goes, I just listened to episode seven and cried so many times. So sad, but so true. Thank you once again for putting yourself out there along with your guests and helping others through this journey. It's nice to not feel alone. Um, that's great. You're not alone. We're we're all trying to work through this world we've inherited. So cheers to you. Cheers to taking down the patriarchy. Hell yeah. Yeah. Fuck, fuck the patriarchy. We we all agree with that sentiment here. Um, we, we, all right. we do. So this is the longest one, but it's the last one. So that's good. Um, (laughs) But uh, yeah, appreciate this one. Um, It says, uh, I've been meaning to message you uh, for a while since discovering your podcast. I grew up in an evangelical church in Alabama. Hello, my uh, buck tooth neighbors. Um, (laughs) There's there's like three nice places in Alabama. I'm sorry. You're probably from one of them. Um, (laughs) <laughs> up in an evangelical church in Alabama uh, and was very involved in the ministry until high school and throughout most of college. My senior year of uni, something started to uh, not feel so right, and I slowly started deconstructing my faith and the way I was living. It's been a long journey. I finally left the church for good two years ago. It was a very intentional process and a bit lonely. I had started to feel uh, really feel alone, just wondering if there was anyone out there with a similar journey. I know people have left their parents' church because they were never really into it in the first place, but I didn't know anyone else who had been very involved and really studied the Bible who eventually ended up changing their minds. Then I found your podcast. Uh, I've really enjoyed hearing your perspectives as a former pastor and Bible college student. After listening to your first two episodes, my husband and I bought your book, which was great. I identify with so much uh, that of what you touch on and regarding problems of white evangelicalism in the United States. Thank you. Yes, it is so freaking lonely when you first leave. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I'm sure all three of us. I mean, me and Chris, uh, you know, got to kind of help each other work out some of our deconstruction. Um, but I know Lily, you had a very difficult journey out, um, and I know Chris and I did too. And yes, that feeling of loneliness, uh, specifically of people who like took it seriously um, and then left. Yeah, that's that's tough for sure. Well, yeah, yeah, it's really tough. And I know that you and I have talked a little bit about this, but it's like those people that have dedicated so much of themselves and their lives to Christianity. It's not, it's not just one facet of their life, right? It's right. It's everything. everything. It's everything. It's, it's how they believe that the world was created, how they were created, how they should live their lives, how they should think. It's like, it's a really big deal. So yeah, for someone that has incorporated that, all that into their lives to leave that it's really isolating. It's a huge deal. It's like dying in a way. Oh like, yeah, totally. Really, like, and it's understandable. Dying to and re- being that. reborn. And it's very, yeah, it's a rebirth yeah, for sure. Difficult. So it's to like say like, that you're not alone. <laughs> yeah. Like to, to that, to the writer <laughs> of that, like, no, like, yeah, you're not alone, but also we understand how lonely it really feels. Um, it's, yeah. It's so, truly mind boggling. And and honestly, like, I mean, like, I, you know, it's been a comfort to me since starting, you know, first with the book and then the podcast, realizing I, I was shocked how not alone I was. Um, you know, uh, it's not just me out there, like, with a podcast. There's great podcasts and great books out there all about this stuff. Um, but it means a lot. And I think every voice has a unique angle to add. So, uh, yeah, the person who sent me that, like, honestly, like, make sure you know, you're safe, but if you are in a safe place to share your story, you know, it can help others. Um, and so, uh, yeah, just keep it going because we do need each other. It is a, it is a hard, hard thing and it does get easier. Um, but it, it never, uh, gets too easy. (laughs) There's definitely difficult days after, after leaving the cult for sure. Yeah. And I mean, you can also, you can, and probably will eventually find chosen family in your life. But that, and that's a wonderful, beautiful thing to find. But that also won't always mean that the loneliness will stop because mm-hmm. it 
it can be pretty rare to find yourself in new circles of people that have never had those mm-hmm. kinds of experiences and that yeah. didn't grow up Christian and didn't grow up with that kinds of trauma and can't really understand how anyone could sincerely believe the kinds of things that you used to sincerely believe. So that's important to remember too, that it is good to find your own chosen family, but that ultimate source of loneliness, it's, it's kind of something that it's good to heal within yourself. You can't really rely yeah. on other people to fix that. Definitely. That's absolutely true. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's all that's all the thanks I wanted to read. I did also uh, just want to, you know, thank all my guests. Um, and I'll, I'll say thank yous in a minute to all of them individually for season two. But over the entire course of the podcast, thank you all for adding to the conversation, no matter what angle you were coming from it, um, coming from and then contributing to it. Um I wanted to say I was I was just reflecting like uh, yesterday um, about like what in what ways have I like grown (laughs) since starting this podcast. Um, And so the first one is kind of obvious, I guess, but um, it's profound for me is I've become much more authentic. Um, I'm much more me than I was uh, when I when I first started. Uh, I listened to one of the first interviews I ever did on a radio show and like, I'm, I'm still being honest, but I can tell where I'm holding back and um, not expressing things I truly think. And so it's been a cool journey for me just to feel like I've, I'm more authentic. Um, another big one is I'm much more open-minded than I was. Uh, even when I like left the cult, <laughs> like I, I still had some like dogmatic beliefs um, even if they were different than they were before, um, I was still very persuaded that there was right and wrong to everything. I'm much more equipped to like handle different ideas. Um, and the podcast has been a big part of that, being able to talk to diff- different people, coming at it from very different angles, um, has been super rewarding for me. And and the third one, I'm still working on this, but I, I it's it's a true statement. I'm kinder to myself. Um, you know, people who know me, uh, know that in my past, I definitely haven't been kind to myself at all points. Um, and, uh, it's cool to see that I'm getting kinder to myself. There's a lot less shaming myself language. Um, I've gotten to learn being in the public eye and hearing things about myself that I don't like to hear from others. Um, I, I've been able to kind of use that as an opportunity to, um, learn what I do appreciate about myself and love myself. So the podcast has given a lot to me. And obviously that wouldn't exist without um, my awesome guest and my awesome audience. But more so than that, my awesome friends, Chris and Lily, they've been a huge part of that. So guys, thanks for uh, being my friends. I really appreciate it. You're Always. welcome. It's a full-time job. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not lying. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> <clears throat> Chris puts in more labor in keeping me alive. I feel like than anybody. Like I like I, I'll, I'll brag on him a little bit. Like no, <laughs> Chris, I, I'm second most because there's one person who puts more labor into it, and that that would be you. <laughs> Oh, okay, that's valid. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. But Chris literally talks to me almost every week, and I'm not gonna lie. Eighty percent of it is just BS and me rambling about nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but he does that's it for me, it. and it means it means a lot to me. So I uh, appreciate that. And Lily, you've been there for for my lowest lows a lot of times. Um, also, Lily, fun fact: in like a few, let's see. In a week, it'll be uh, one year since you picked me up from the airport and we met in person for the first time. So that's fun. How does that make you feel, John? So mad. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it makes, <laughs> was it because it makes, I was, was it, are you mad because I was like late without even knowing that I was late? <laughs> <laughs> I actually <laughs> forgot about that. No, no. <laughs> No, where did I was trying to think? This is not good content. But Lily, what was? Where did we go? We ate. Did we go to Mod? Is that where we went? Did we get food? I feel like we got food. Uh Oh, he's back. Sorry, technical difficulties. All right. (laughs) Oh no, John's gone. He's still there. He's still coming. He's coming back. John's coming back. I'm here, but y'all are both a little grainy. How do y'all look to each other? I look amazing. The same all the time. as you did before. 
Okay. Well, you guys have been grainy the whole time for me, so yeah, it's I'm been just, grainy I'm all just the time. Rolling with like old punches. Time. Okay, same over here. So I'm, I'm assuming that was just a little little glitch, but we're good. Um. So, uh, Lily, did we go to Mod Pizza? Is that where we went? Yeah, that is, I yeah, that is where we went. Okay, <laughs> cool. Because so I was like, where? What did we? I was like, we went somewhere, and I don't remember where. Okay. I actually forgot that's, that that's where we went until you literally just said it. Nice. Um. So <laughs> Chris just disappeared. Um. So <laughs> I want some you mod. <laughs> I'm gonna go order some mod pizza real quick. <laughs> um. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. So the podcast launched in, uh, in early 2021. Um, guys, can y'all off the top of your heads think of one thing you've grown in since early 2021? Oh, yeah, I went back to school. <laughs> yeah, you went back to school. You're trying to save the world one person at a time. So you're doing awesome. <laughs> I'm trying to attune with everyone. <laughs> I actually recently um, have learned more about the phrase attunement, and I feel like it sounds so cheesy, but I actually do love it. What, what does attunement mean to you, like. Lily? What does attunement mean to me? Um, yeah. <clears throat> I would say that it means um, setting aside your expectations um, for where a conversation needs to go or where that person needs to go and showing up entirely without any ulterior motives or things to say ahead of time to just fully meet a person where they are at in that moment. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. And I, I, I would think that would come somewhat naturally to you. Oh, thanks. I, I actually do think it comes kind of naturally to me. That's um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's been it's been a really really cool journey. Um, I also have noticed that I'm significantly kinder and more patient to other people um, than I was in 2021, or at That's least good. in like the beginning of early 2021. I would say that I am. Maybe, well, I don't know if I can say significantly, but it feels significant to me. <laughs> um, I just I I, I feel yeah. like it, yeah. What were you gonna say? Well, I was just going to say, yeah, I mean, any any amount of kindness towards yourself and towards others, that's more than it was is good, <laughs> you know, <laughs> no matter how much it is. But I, I would I would assume you've become kinder, especially, you know, through school lately, but like in other ways too, just getting older and like becoming more you, I, I think is is something that a trajectory you you and I can both now be on now that we're not in a cult. <laughs> well, I think that I've gotten to a better place of um, instead of showing up to a situation with, oh, this is how I feel. This is how I am observing this. And here's my response to this, which wasn't wrong per se, but I think I've grown to instead show up to ask questions instead and just, you know, and just rather than kind of put a frame of how I'm feeling onto another person, just ask, Hey, I'm curious how this happened, or I'm wondering how this happened for you. And then that, because there's information I might know, and that could very much affect what I was going to say. And by me placing what I was going to say on another person, that could very easily make them feel shut down, like they can't share whatever yeah. it was that they would have shared. Nice. That's awesome. Chris, how 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 do you think you've been improved? We won't talk about how you've gotten worse, but how have you improved <laughs> since the beginning oh, yeah. of 2021? Well, because I was going to say, I've been learning that I need to learn exactly what Lily's been learning. Um, <laughs> so I really admire that, actually. I think that's a, that's a really, really astute point on how to like handle conversations and conflicts and stuff like that. So that's something it's I've been not actually easy, look, so. looking and digging into. Yeah, it's, it's a hard thing to let go of your own point of view long enough to just try to seek better understanding of another person so that you can better communicate with them. Like that's, it makes such a difference, but it's a really hard thing to do. Um, yeah. I don't know. Since early 2021. Um, I don't know. I feel like I, I guess I would actually kind of agree with what John said at the beginning here, like the talking about being more authentic. Um, 
I've been more and more comfortable with being myself with other people around, um, but also more comfortable even talking about the main topics of this show. Like I felt super nervous about uh, popping on and doing an episode with John for the first time. I was like, Oh, I don't know if I want to go public with this. Like I don't want random people in my, you know, social media feed seeing me and being like, Oh, look, who's not a Christian or whatever. And um, now I'm in this place now where I'm just like, well, why, why should I hide something about myself? That's I'm not going to pretend to be another person. Um, I, I don't need to be antagonistic and angry about it all the time, but I also don't need to like pretend to be somebody else just to keep the peace or maintain the respect of people that I don't speak with very often or at all. Um, so I've been really learning to just kind of let go of that. Um, it's been a big part of my recent life as well. Just kind of like, okay, it's time to just start being honest and coming clean about these things and not hiding, um, my doubts or my lack of faith or my viewpoints, you know, and, and so just trying to become more comfortable with that, become more comfortable with who I am and how I can share those things with other people. Nice. I mean, dude, you're doing it. I I've seen it myself, you know, that like you're, you're quicker to speak your, your truth and like say your perspective <laughs> now. Um, obviously when I first yeah. met you, uh, that was not you <laughs> because, no. and, and, no. and it wasn't me either. I mean, we were both had our, our, uh, influence from the cult. Um, but like, <laughs> yeah. but, but, you know, for you, it was very much an ingrained personality trait, you know, I, I think to say when you were in Bible college and to think how far you've come from there to be like, nah, dude, this is what I think, uh, is pretty, pretty cool that mm-hmm. I've gotten to see that, you know? So yeah, spot well, on. And- well, and John, you didn't know me when I was like a hardcore conservative Christian, but Chris, Chris was faced with friends with me <laughs> when I was. I so was. He, he can maybe comment if he so desires on like how different of a person I am now than I was then. I'm just I really glad this. that I wasn't. I'm just really glad that I I wasn't very uh, gung ho about the unfriend button. Because mm-hmm. there were times where I was just like, "What the?" Like I was, I was a like <laughs> relatively conservative Christian, mm-hmm. and there would be times where I would be like scrolling on Facebook, and all of a sudden, I'd be like, "The fuck? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> why am I reading her posts? Who? Like I haven't talked to this person in years. Why do I?" But I, it was just so interesting that I just kept leaving it, and then all of a sudden, like this shift started to happen, and I was like what in the heck and then i was like well she went too far and then eventually we like went even out and everything was fine and then you and john started talking to each other and i was just like okay uh this is not if you told me in 2013 hey you know that long-haired dude that just like walks around in the neighborhood He's going to be friends with that girl you were friends with in middle school when you were homeschooling together. And I, I, I would have been like, you're insane. Um, and yeah, now, wild. Yeah, this totally makes sense. <laughs> it is wild to think about how y- obviously y'all know each other. Y'all are childhood friends. And like, it's very funny that, um, <laughs> that, yeah, me and Chris, it's not like we met and then we were besties. I mean, that relationship took a minute to grow. And really accelerated yeah. when we lived together. I mean, before we lived together, probably like a few, probably a, several months before we lived together is when we really started becoming good friends. Um, yeah, but it's funny because I, our stuff. first impressions of each other, I don't think, was like, that'll be like one of my best friends. And so to take it no. <laughs> even a degree further, I don't think my one of my best friends is going to be friends with one of my childhood friends. <laughs> like, it's a it's a funny world. <laughs> Yeah, it's did fun you, to see it. Um, and absolutely, like, no judgment here, because I would not blame you. But did you think that, like, when I was super conservative, making all those posts on social media and stuff, that I was, like, like unwell? Or, like, what was your impression? <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought you were extremely passionate. Okay. I, 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 I was, like, I, I, I was, like, I, I don't 
I don't track with a lot of like you. You would like share like conspiracy theories and like wild uh-huh. stuff sometimes, where I was just like, uh, I don't <laughs> think so. But I definitely was. I was. I was just like. I think my perspective was just like, wow, she's like really passionate about this stuff. Like she just <laughs> cares a lot. Um, just across the board. And then when you started to become more liberal and you started to like leave the Christian faith, the passionate like aspect of your personality was still coming through hard. So I was just like, Oh yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So you just flip from one thing to the other, you know, whatever. And then after a while I was like, I saw a lot more, like there was a lot more narrowing down. You started to be like very precise your yeah. thoughts became more cohesive. And I was like, oh, and you shared a lot about like what was going on in your life, in your background that made a lot of that make more sense. Your story, as it came out, like I started to be like, oh, I'm watching someone heal in real time. Like I'm watching this, like these different phases of like a child growing up and then escaping from abusive situations and um, an abusive religion and all these different aspects of your life. I, I'm just like watching it happen in real time, but I'm not even like in the same part of the state as this person. So it was just really interesting to experience. But over time, like, I think it, it went from like, what the heck to like, okay, that's different to, yeah. Oh no, this makes complete sense. And actually I'm really excited for her. Like, especially like as I started to transition out of the faith that I held at the time and like start to move into whatever like progressive Christianity I was trying to accept, like seeing your story made more sense to me then. I was like, oh no, wait, no, I totally get this. Makes way more sense to me now that I've like started to let go of my past and change a little bit. So yeah, I don't know. It was it was it was definitely funny to be because I felt like a fly on the wall, I think. Social media is, has a habit of doing that. If uh Yeah. <laughs> you just kind of like sometimes you like still stay connected through that, but you're not directly talking to someone, but you're like, oh yeah, I know what they're up to. That that definitely was what was going on. And I just yeah. added Lily because she liked to comment. And I was like, yeah, anyone who likes my comments on threads, like I'm just going to add them because I need people to feed my ego. So that's why you and I are yeah. friends. <laughs> I, have no I-, I have no idea like what the conversation even was about. I just remember you were commenting on something probably that Chris had posted because you like we were on mutual yep. friends. So that's what, what I would assume. And I just remember <clears> thinking like, oh, like... I agree with this guy's points. These are solid. Yeah. Yeah. I'm it was, sure it was, it was somebody some... being anti-feminist or something like that. I'm sure. It was straight that's up. like the I think... only consistent good thing about me. Like, <laughs> from like Christianity <laughs> to now. Is that it's true. Like, it's actually people? true. <laughs> yeah. Like literally my entire career of Bible college was just like, listen. Bible college was people. Josh, like, you guys need to respect women. <laughs> Um, um, meanwhile, I was not, but you know, whatever. I was, um, but well, <laughs> at least I thought it was the right thing to do. It was there. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it, there. it is um, also like harder to recognize your own like personal oh, transgressions yeah. and implications right. when it's something that is so normal in your life. It's easy to spot someone else's fuck ups, but seeing yeah. your own. Uh, not to cut you off, but speaking of, um, not <laughs> respecting women uh let's recap this last <laughs> season um which started with uh an episode on purity culture um and so uh yeah so season two episode one purity culture uh was with my friend miley uh chris knows her as well she went to bible college with us um she was fantastic it was the most popular episode of the season most listened to um and she's very articulate and obviously purity culture is a super broad topic um so to discuss it in a short amount of time is difficult but she hit like huge points and made them really simple so miley thank you for coming on i appreciate that um the second episode was about the afterlife this was a very polarizing episode (laughs) um because uh (laughs) Steve, Steve Martin, not that Steve Martin, but the other Steve Martin, uh, was uh, super, he was super assertive in his spiritual beliefs. And I didn't really challenge him much, um, partially because I like kind of think the way he does um, about things. Um, and so people were like, wait, what? You're all like anti cult stuff and you're not like, you're just letting this guy say things about the afterlife with authority. Um, and I was like, well, I like him. He's cool. And 
He holds the current <laughs> record for the oldest guest uh, that has been on the show. Oh, wow. you know, he's the only one that's over 70 <clears throat> who's been on. So uh, well, how, super oh, sharp. I, I can't remember exactly, but I believe, I don't want to guess. I'll say 70. We'll just say he's 70. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll guess the low end. Uh, but he was so cool. So good. So nice. Just a great guy. Um, so yeah. I was very thankful he came on. Uh, the next one was titled Faith versus Works. That one was an interesting one um, because uh, John Hagman, very nice guy. He was super open to talking about hard things. I remember when I first got in contact with him about doing the show, he wanted to go a certain direction. And I asked him if he'd be willing to go a different direction. And he was like, wow, that's much more challenging, but I'm down. Like, I, I like these challenging questions. So super appreciate his willingness to communicate. Um, he definitely has a very unorthodox view of faith. Uh, so it was wild to try to figure out why we disagree and where we disagree. Um, but it was still definitely a, a, an episode that stretched me. And I'm really thankful he agreed to came, come on. Um, the next one uh, was Janae. And anytime I get to talk to Janae, it's ah, a yeah. good time. Uh, Chris knows her well. Me and Janae were uh, the troublemakers of Moody in a lot of ways. We did not hold back uh, <laughs> in Bible college saying what we felt, especially really to <laughs> political stuff she's awesome she's got a great podcast bad seminarians it's really fun um i was really amazed with how calmly she was able to talk about issues surrounding segregation um and how bold she was in sharing her perspectives it was super awesome very very happy she came on uh then was community um not not my favorite television show uh just talking about um community in and outside of church and uh, i got to have rachel roberts on which is great because uh, i love her book it's called uh confessions of an american nun and she's just awesome she's very very fun writing style super sarcastic uh she's an inspiration to me not only as an ex-christian but as a person she's awesome uh the next episode was divorce <laughs> which um that was the episode I think I talked about Christianity the least in. Um, and I was really super nervous about like talking about divorce as someone who's uh, had one. Um, and it, you know, <laughs> hits close to home. Uh, but like Leslie is just phenomenal. She's, she's good at getting to the blunt truth of the matter. Um, and I was thrilled she came on, really enjoyed that episode and actually got a lot of positive feedback, uh, because people are like, wow, this is actually like useful, super helpful information about how divorces work. So that was fun. The next one was marketing. Uh, that was cool. I, uh, John Follis, um, I was a fan of his documentary, um and so you know he was he came on air and um dude he was just so nice like on and off air he was asking because he has a background in advertising and marketing he's like what can i do for you to help get your name out there i he actually got in contact with me first and was telling me how much he loved the podcast so it was a super cool like dynamic where me and him both just really appreciated the other person's work um, so I definitely recommend watching his documentary. It's called Leaving God. If you just type into Google Leaving God documentary, it'll be the first result. Uh, it's a very, it's an award winning documentary. It's very good. Um, episode eight was just a bonus episode of Parsing Propaganda. That's one of my paid shows for subscribers only. It's the closest I'll ever get to interviewing Tim Keller <laughs> because I just read an article from him Um he was uh he has takes he has takes on critical race theory and uh you know i just basically disagreed with all his takes and it was a super lengthy article i reviewed and there were huge concepts that were mentioned um so i would easily say it was the worst episode of the season <laughs> and, uh, definitely the most dry um but that's what parsing propaganda is so if you want to pay me five bucks a month to hear uh worse content do that um and that is why i have not <laughs> Yeah, no, don't. Don't do it. Um, You're really selling it here, John. You're really selling it. It's it's called anti-marketing. Um, um, yeah. yeah. So, John, was clear, John was clearly never a salesperson. Did you uh, learn that from the marketing guy? No, no, I did not. I did not. We did talk okay, about marketing. I was going to say, you want your money back. Yeah, it was just like, it works for me. play everything yeah. you do that makes money. <laughs> It, it actually works on me though, because then I'm like, oh, he's not desperate for money. He's not trying I'm to not, trick me into this. For, do for not free. give me money to hear my voice. 
like the biggest thing i'm gonna go on a real little rant here because i've had enough champagne Uh, so like if you are my friend do not subscribe to the podcast if you're a stranger please do but if you're my friend like you've heard me talk so much because it's impossible to be my friend without hearing me talk a lot so why would you pay (laughs) to hear more of it it makes no sense don't do it episode nine was (laughs) about um christian college Chris, you were oh, on that yeah. one. Uh, Scott, yeah. Akuma- I loved that one. I loved oh. that one. It, it was okay. one of my favorites, um, too. That was so Seriously. much fun to listen to. I was actually listening to um, that on my way to and from my own campus. And I was like, I man, I am so fucking glad this is not the education that I'm receiving. Thank <laughs> God. Yeah, you should be. You should be. I was like, praise oh. Lilith that this is not the, res- the education that I'm getting. So I have to ask, when you say praise Lilith, is that the historic <laughs> demon god thing? Or is that just you? Or are you just saying praise be me that I made a good decision? <laughs> I, are you are you implying that I might be the historical fiction Lilith? Uh, no. Oh. I'm not implying that. I'm inferring that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. I am inferring it too. Actually, I'm. I've always been very curious at like the whole uh, lore around Adam having a first wife, Lilith, because I this it's was pretty amazing. That was like a that was like a sexual snake. I mean, and. Chris knows not to get me going on bestiality. Um, yeah, but, we uh, do. Uh, yes, there's there's a long Jeez. history of me questioning the legitimacy of what is and what isn't bestiality. Not because I think animals no, yeah. should have sex you with should. humans, but because I think we should be very clear about our boundaries with animals. Um, so that's exactly. <laughs> it. I was like, you better you better explain that because you're gonna get absolutely <laughs> people be like, wait, one what? <laughs> <laughs> um, still okay. a little bit. I'm okay. still a little bit wondering Before what you we... mean by. <laughs> don't, worry about it. don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll about get it. to that later. We'll get we'll to that later. Off air. Talk about it off air. Before, it's too taboo. Too taboo continue, a topic. <laughs> Before we continue discussing that amazing episode, I just want to point out that my first exposure to the concept of Lilith, and the first time I ever learned about her as a uh, character or concept, was sure. literally from C.S. Lewis. In the Chronicles really? of Narnia, yeah, oh. yeah, 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 because Lewis, Same. Lewis literally was just like, uh, I think it was even in *Line the Wish in the Wardrobe*. I think it was the mm-hmm. very first one where he just like yeah, says, so uh, it. "Really?" He says the White Witch. Yeah. He says the White oh. Witch is the is descended from mm-hmm. Adam and his first wife Lilith, and. Yeah. I remember reading that and being like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> Dude, C.S. Lewis. As, as, a, as, a, as, a, like, as a kid, like a little kid, Christian kid going, did you just say Adam's first wife? <laughs> what? I love how like, evangelicals are like, C.S. Lewis is our patron saint. And then you read his stuff and you're like, oh, there are so oh, many and references. And C.S. Lewis is just like, like, how can I fuck shit up today? Literally. Oh. Okay, did so yeah, but keep it. You- Wait, I'm gonna I cut you off. To, Only no, I have to tell you. I have to tell you okay. that I was in a, I was in a Chronicles of Darnia book club at my first. Uh, <laughs> that was my first. I, I, Christian, I, I, that was my first homeschool co-op. My one of my first classes at my first homeschool Christian co-op in to, like third to grade. Be, to be Incredible. fair, I can one up you. I not only yeah. took a class on C.S. Lewis in Bible college. I helped create a class on C.S. Lewis in college. Yes, he um, did. And then got college credit for it. Oh, my God. I did. <clears throat> uh, it was a great class, though, to be clear. Honestly, <laughs> though. Bit. Honestly. Uh, but, yeah, sorry, Scott. I didn't mean to do this to you. You're great. Your episode we was great. We loved that episode, Scott. We loved it. Yes, yeah, We Scott love it. Was Your podcast is amazing. fantastic. Be on the lookout for his book. I think he just signed his publishing deal. So hopefully next year it'll come out uh, talking about his experiences oh, cool. at APU. Um, yeah, it, it, you've t- touched on it. But Chris, how did you feel doing that episode talking about our, our history at, at Moody and also uh, getting to know Scott a little bit? Um, that was a genuinely good time. I was really sad that I had already had other uh, stuff planned that day. I had to leave early. Um, cause it was, I was just having so much fun talking to y'all. And, um, Scott was just like such an incredibly, like, I don't know. I, I hate using the word nice because it like, is, it feels so mediocre, but like genuinely like such a kind and just like pleasant person to talk to. Oh, 
Um, chill as fuck. <laughs> oh yeah, just like he was so, so chill, so able to like connect so quickly and be very genuine and honest. Um, I wanted and to talk was to very him. comfortable. Yeah, exactly. Like I was like, man, I want to just hang out with this guy sometime mm-hmm. because like. He's got a lot of really cool I got stuff in, to say. I got invited to I got invited to a private evangelical party of his, but it's in LA. So I'm like, I can't no, do it. I can't. You I should can't. go. Your money you should go. I can't do it. I can't. I can't. I need- I, Scott, the people <laughs> want me there. <laughs> Make it happen, <laughs> Captain. Uh, but no, off air, I talked to him and like I joked with him because during the podcast, he asked some really good questions. I'm like, so I can tell you're used to being a host because he like he was starting to get to know us on it. And I'm like, hey, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm supposed to be interviewing you. Uh, super cool guy. Um, the next episode was uh, titled Narcissism. <clears throat> that was with Radia Gleese. She was probably the highest profile guest I had on this year. Um it was also the longest of the year and for good reason um she had a lot to say about how cults form and operate because she had been at the beginning of a cult to the end of a cult um and so it was really cool to like uh you know just see her her uh perspectives of seeing like the entire scope of a cult and how it develops and shrinks and and this and that funny story uh me and radia we almost recorded an episode on valentine's day and we joked about how that was like <laughs> indicative of our love lives <laughs> since leaving the cults we were like why are we both free on valentine's day um but uh something came up so we weren't able to do it so radia if you're listening you owe me a date um that's that's just just to let you know um <laughs> but but yeah super fun episode Episode 11 uh, was me and some girl named Lily. Um, (laughs) That's you. Uh, I remember how we were really surprised that that episode ended up a lot more chill than like intense. I think we were really preparing for it to be really heavy and then it it wasn't necessarily. But um, Mm -hmm. I don't know. How was it for you? How was that for you? Was it good for you? Was that (laughs) episode good for you, Lily? (laughs) Um, it was pretty good for me. Oh, my cat just knocked over all my other rice crackers, and now it's no longer good for me. Oh, that's, that's very, very sad. sad. Cats yeah, can be actually... disruptive. That's why Louie's not allowed in the studio. <laughs> yeah, Roar has I... been hanging out. For anyone watching video, they will have seen Roar in the background. But yeah, he just knocked over my, my, my rice crackers. Oh, poor rice crackers. My cat went AWOL as soon as we started recording, which surprises me because he's usually desperate for attention. Oh, I love so. Simon. Simon's great. Um, he's a good one. Anyway. Yeah. Simon and Laura talking about Laura Lily. And Lily. But yeah. Uh, Lily, yeah, it was about mental health. And part of it was because of the journey you've been, you've been on. It's funny because she's off camera. There we go. <laughs> I was just talking to no one for a minute. There. No, um, I'm, I'm still here. I'm just picking at my rice cracker. <laughs> How is how well as you pick up those rice crackers? How was the mental health episode for you? Oh, I don't know why this is funny. Um, probably because I'm on my second glass of wine. I'm finishing my second glass of wine. That's why. Um, one more was, glass and you start spilling things. <laughs> literally, one more glass and it's my fault. I'm spilling things. Um, it was fun. Like it was. You know, I said that I hate. Um, I hate a script. I don't ever read notes if they're sent to me, which is why I had so much anxiety with like the um, episode in season one with um, uh, Rachel, where we talked about like gay people. Cause like, Oh my God, she was so prepared and like so brilliant. And I was like, what's up y'all? Like, I'm just trying to, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well yeah so we made an effort i remember in preparing for that episode to be like hey let's try to go a little like loosey-goosey with it and not do much prep work and just kind of see where it goes yeah it was fun and then um i listened to it and i was like you know because when you're listening i you know i am also a podcast listener and consumer as you might not know um when you're listening to podcasts it's a lot easier to be um, a little bit more critical of what you're consuming and just be like oh man there's a better way that i could have phrased that or there's a better way that i could have answered that question or i might have answered that this way and you know i always i always have that come up so a little bit of that happened for me but overall like i I think it was a good episode. I definitely had fun doing it. Um, mental health is obviously a passion of mine since I'm going to school to be a counselor. Um, so I would I would love to come back sometime and talk more about 
anything at all to do with mental health or folks' struggle with holding space or anything like that? Well, I don't know how to tell you and Chris this, but this is the last episode y'all will be on. I'm forbidding y'all from coming back. <laughs> uh, y'all have been terrible. The fans have said you're awful. No, I'm just obviously the opposite of all of that. Y'all will be like, I, don't, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. <laughs> Literally, like, everyone's like... Like, the numbers show that people love Chris and, like, the messages show that people love Lily. Like, undoubtedly. <laughs> um, so, y'all are uh, going to be my content, whether you like it or not. Wait, um, have you had messages right. about me that I haven't heard about? <laughs> maybe uh, so <laughs> maybe i'm holding that i maybe i'm holding on to that information for a more opportune time um but <laughs> uh so episode 12 that, no <laughs> like seriously episode 11 with mental that was a really good conversation i really obviously me and you have a lot of talks uh i feel this way about both of you like sometimes i'll have talks with y'all and i'm like Shame that's not recorded. That was good, but yeah, I, but but, it, but that's kind of nice because it's like, well, yeah. I mean, it wouldn't have been that good if it was recorded, obviously. <laughs> um, so but uh, I was gonna just like pop in to say that I I did listen to that um, whole episode, but um, the mental health episode with you both, mm -hmm. and it was a blast to listen to. Because, um, like you said, like you were talking about how it was very relaxed tone. It was just such like a comfortable, easy conversation to listen to. Interesting, thoughtful, um, but also just like it didn't feel tight and formal and like really restrictive. It just felt very casual and comfortable. Um, like and I felt like I was session. hanging out with friends. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it was. It was, it was, yeah, it was like a cross between what's happening right now and a therapy session. And I was just like, this is really cool. Um, nice. So I really enjoyed that episode. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Fun. I did too. I did too, Lily. Anytime I get to talk to you, it's a blast. Um, so, so episode 12 was from a pastor turned stand up comedian, which was kind of fun. And uh, it was interesting. Most of what he like he's interested in and talked about was how like certain abuses in the comedy world are like nearly identical to the Christian cult. Um, so that was very interesting to talk to him about that. He's got a good podcast, um, and he just came out with a really good episode. Um, so highly recommend Dan Capper. He's great. Um, in episode 13, I had kind of like a low key debate. I don't even really know how to describe it, but it was, it was, uh, it was cool. It was w about basically intelligent design versus evolution, um, with Dr. Ron. Oh, yeah. And uh, I was so grateful for just how respectful and intellectually honest uh, Dr. Fuzz, as he likes to be called, Dr. Fuzz was. Um, he also had Fuzzy a was. great team. <laughs> Fuzzy was he? He had a he had a great PR team, um, and like he even sent me like a free copy of his newest book that I started reading and was like, "Wow, this is like." intellectually heavy stuff so i'm gonna put this down and pick it back up when i can actually consume this um but yeah he was like the kindest guest ever and um i really hope i can uh do some more kind of subtle arguing with him that me and him like to do uh in the future <laughs> because he was he made disagreeing with him like just so delightful and it was like not like <laughs> yeah. a brutal confrontation or like anything upsetting so i'm really happy with how that turned out i was nervous for it because i was like i've never been formally taught evolution how am i supposed to talk about this with a guy who makes it his life's work to talk about intelligent design but we had just such a like That's time really conversation great. So That's super awesome. thankful. Thank you, Dr. Rana. That was uh, that was definitely like top five episodes of the year for sure. It was really awesome. Um, it was, the next one it was, was a great. With... Listen. I really liked it. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. The the next one was uh, with a long lost friend from my past, Patrick Gruber. Um, he made he made a point. He was like, "Mention my last name. I want people to know it was me." I was like, "Nice." Uh, he was like, "Patrick Gruber." I, I love that. I respect uh, that so much. Literally, cheers. Yeah, <laughs> Me too. yeah. cheers. Yeah, cheers to that. Yeah, I'm, like, that. I'm like, don't don't link me on social media. And he's like, yeah. say my full name. Yeah, I honestly he feel that so much. Make sure that everyone knows I'm the one who said this. I respect it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he's awesome. I'm hoping to meet up with him soon because he lives not too far away from me. But I haven't seen him in over a decade. But um, he came on to discuss uh the problems in both like Catholicism and Protestantism. And this was probably like the second or third most popular of the season. And I think in part, 
it's because he's just so eloquent and like concise. Like he summarizes huge things so quickly. And I'm sure I'll have him back on because he actually um, has done some research. Uh, I'm, I'm starting to get burpy because I've been drinking. Hold on. <laughs> Oh boy, it's starting. Um, so, uh, but I'm sure I'll have him back on. He has a background in in uh, the politics of religion, so I'm hoping to have him back on next season. Um, but uh, yeah, so so that was a super good episode. The next one, uh, Lucas Wilson, he came on for episode 15 to recount his experiences uh, going through conversion therapy at Liberty University, um, and he Thank just you. did a great job of like zooming out. And like explaining how conversion therapy is more a product of like evangelicalism as a whole, especially purity culture. And I, I loved his ability to like connect large concepts to his like abusive experiences. And, and he's a delight. So I was super glad he came on. Uh, episode 16, wild. Um, my friend Finn came on and he just t- tells like the craziest story. And don't get me wrong. Like I've heard many crazy <sighs> stories. But basically, the story is he was tortured uh, in the name of, like, training for missions work. And so there's no way to summarize the episode. It's just wild. Um, and if you want to see how dark Christians can get, that's that's the episode to go to. Um, and then the last two episodes are monologues for me. So who cares? Um, <laughs> that, was, that was season two. Uh, so super fun season thank you to every guest who added so much value to uh the discussions i really do appreciate it we're gonna take a short ad break and then get back and have a lot more fun so thank y'all doesn't matter if you're on a computer or a phone (laughs) uh i mean good writing honestly for for a cheesy ad i i was i'm actually pretty proud of it also, I recorded that ad. Well, you should literally. because it's literally gotten in my head before. I have been singing it to myself the next day. It doesn't matter if you're on a computer or a phone, out and about with some friends, or at home all alone. If you watch a podcast on Spotify, Apple, and many more, everything's in one place at Anchor. It's free to download the app or sign in online. You'll earn some money guaranteed every single time. You won't be disheartened. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Seriously, guys, just use Anchor. Why would you use anyone else? All right, so we just had an hour break <laughs> while y'all had a 30 second one. <laughs> um, and uh, in that time, I have kicked my champagne bottle. I'm gonna take the final swig right now. And I have knocked over my wine bottle and discovered that one of my toenails on my left foot might be coming off. Which, under Chris's advisement, I have covered the bandage so I can forget about it and not deal with it. Right. I mean, to be fair, the bandage was your idea, so actually... Well, I mean, the not dealing with it, though, was your idea. The, pre- the pretending nothing is wrong is... The, the pretending nothing wrong is my idea. <laughs> so to surmise, <laughs> drunk, silly, and stupid are the next minutes of this podcast. <laughs> so... Uh, oh, I thought you were trying to name name each of us. <laughs> drunk, silly, like the, and stupid. Like, like John like is drunk, drunk like Lily is silly, and I'm stupid. Like the dwarves. I can roll with that. Yeah, I can roll with that. Except what, what would be more accurate is we've got a drunk person, we've got a person whose toenail is falling off, and then we got a person whose wife is like dying of COVID in the other room. Um, <laughs> so we're we are we are just, just killing it. Tonight. You should specify that Sarah like is just not dying. You should specify that Sierra is not literally dying because COVID actually she does kill people. She is not dying. Uh, yeah, she that's is, a very she good is point. metaphorically dying, and Sierra, absolutely, Zero. she is. She is in the very beginning brutal stage where you just like have a, na- a nasty fever for the entire day and feels like absolute shit. But she'll be By literally dying, fine. I mean, absolute shit, and she should be fine. She is triple she'll vaxxed be fine and a very healthy fine. young person. She's a healthy young um, person. 
Yes, nothing bad ever I, happens I am, to us. I am sweating like a I'm, mofo because, like, my air, your air conditioning's broken. My air conditioning's broken, so I'm just dying because it's like 90 degree weather in Atlanta. So and I'm you live so, in Georgia. I'm miserable, but to so me, that's your fault, for, your living fault for living in Georgia. Same. To me, to me, <laughs> to me, all this sounds like a perfect environment to play some trivia. So okay, this let's is do how it. The, let's do I'm it. Gonna, I'm going to suggest so rules. We can modify rules beforehand, but not afterwards because we're going to play fair. Okay? Fair. So here's my suggested rules. We are going to. There's ten questions. Okay. I think the points should escalate each round. So question one, one point. Question two, two points. Question three, three points. Et cetera, oh. et cetera. Because they get harder. The okay. questions do get harder. Um, okay. I think the way to do this is to go one at a time and give the opponent a chance to steal. But we can do two things. We can either do when the opponent steals, we just keep the points. Or we can say a steal is worth less than normal. So we can say a steal is only worth one point. What do y'all think? How does one steal? Just like if the yeah. person whose turn it is gets it wrong, the other person has an opportunity to answer. I see. Mm, okay. And we can I either see. say one chance for each person or we can say, listen, like we'll keep going till someone gets it. One chance for each person is going to be my, my go-to there. Okay, we'll go with that. That's my we'll recommendation. Sure. Yeah, I don't care. Okay. All right. And then... Lily, do you have opinions on the point values here? Because my gut is like the stealing should be worth less, but that's just because the other person's narrowed it down a little. What do you um, think? <clears throat> or should we, we go high go stakes? I could go either way. Uh, I have no objection in making the point a little bit lower or keeping it the same. All right. So this is what Jeez, I'm no going to say. No. I'm just going to say a steal is worth one point. And okay. we'll just each get one chance. Uh, I'm going to... Do you think Lily should start ladies first, after all? I feel like that that's actually like a patriarchal thing that I don't subscribe to. So you want I know, I was first? waiting for that. <laughs> well, I'm the one with the pen and paper. Yeah, that's true. So, Chris goes first, or you go first? I don't care. Chris should go first, because that's amazing. <laughs> I just didn't okay. like your phrase. I felt like I had to start these, arguing. I'm sorry. These, that was these, maybe my intention. rules... <laughs> These rules are important, and all you can talk about is whether or not ladies first is a patriarchal construct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And it yes. is. It yes. is, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. So, Chris, you're starting. Is that cool? Okay. That's fine. You can do whatever you want to me. Okay. So, <laughs> here's question one, verse, worth one point. Okay. Have okay. there been more guests... Who are women or men on the cult of Christianity? Oh. Okay. Okay. I have a question. Right. Yeah, no, no. go ahead. Let, let, no, 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 no. Chris, just give your answer first. <laughs> is, this a, is this a question about the question, Lily? Or is this I have a, question a question about, about like... the question? Okay. Go I ahead. feel like maybe that's unfair. I was just curious if you're including episodes or a number of women or like people in general. So, oh, how good many question. guests have been men versus how many guests have been women? So, if it's a repeat, okay. that counts okay. as one. Oh. Okay. But so if, if you're it's on multiple group, times, that, that doesn't several. count. This is way more <laughs> like. <laughs> No, this this all matters. This all matters. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. You know what? I'm gonna take a shot in the dark. I'm gonna say women. All right. There. So Lily will just automatically get the other point because she can steal. But uh, there have been twelve men and ten women. So it's close. Damn it. But there have been more men than women. There were more women the first season. I was uh, okay. I was gonna yeah. say I was like, is John? Is John? This this question's messing with me because I was like, it, it, would John? 
would I admit publicly be like, <laughs> I I have interviewed more men than women for this podcast. I'm, and I was like, John would really well admit that. it. I'm proud of it. It's hard to find white yeah. men who will talk on a podcast. No. Uh are you serious? No. It's, no it's, not at all. You think he's serious? <laughs> that is uh, that's why they're all there, Lily. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Lily we, we won't question. shut up. So you've okay, got one I, point. You've got one point, just because obviously. You've got one point. Are you going to bring up that I actually uh, texted you one of the trivia questions without realizing that it was a trivia <laughs> yeah, question? I'll, I'll talk about that at, when we get there. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so, Lily, <laughs> you've got one point. Here's the second question worth two points, okay? Okay. How many self identified Christians have been a guest on the Cult of Christianity? Now, I'll give you four options, okay? Okay. Three, five, seven, or nine. The podcast as a whole, or just this last season? The both both seasons, season one and season two. I'm gonna say seven. You got it right. That's two points yeah. for you. Nice job. <laughs> well done. <laughs> okay, so Chris, this one goes back to you. Um, okay. this one's worth three points to date. How many podcast? Well, first off, before I ask this question, this is this was a different question today until I was texting with Lily, and she's like, I'm really proud of the fact that I've <laughs> been the uh, the longest my podcast episode was the longest episode. That was going to be one of my questions. What was the longest episode? And then I was like, ah, crap. She already knows that. So I'm going to switch it. Uh, so this is this was a question I scrapped together last minute. So Chris, to date, how many podcasts has John been a guest on? Two, four, six, or oh. eight? Who do we appreciate? <laughs> um... Wait. Okay, how many podcasts have you been on, or how many episodes of a podcast have you been a guest on? How many have I been a guest on? So not my own show. Yeah. Okay. Um, man, I can remember the first few because I remember like one. You said two, four, six, or eight? Yeah. I'm gonna go with four. All right, three points to you. Good job. Sweet. <laughs> nice. Four. I've been on... I was like, uh, unless there's two more I don't know about. I've been on House of the Mystery Radio, Sink and Desist, Threads Podcast, and Shit You Don't Want to Talk About. Those are the four so far. I'm, I'm sure there'll be some Ooh, more. I don't think I've heard the shit year. you don't want to talk about. That one's relatively cool. recent. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely check it out. Okay. Lily, uh, goes to you. You ready? Mm-hmm. How many episodes of the Cult of Christianity have alliterative titles? So obviously, pastor background, I, I like alliteration. So how many episodes have uh, alliterative titles? Three, five, Wait. seven, or nine? What do you mean by alliterative? So the first letter of each word in the title is the same. I haven't been paying attention to that at all. Okay. So three, five, seven, or nine. Three, three, five, seven, or nine. Five. You got it right. <laughs> so that's four points. Unbelievable. It's been five. Unbelievable. Another fun fact: in season one, episodes six through eight all have alliterative titles in a row. So there's three consecutive ones. So there's manipulative music, patriarchy panel, and Christian classism are all in a row. Uh, oh, interesting. The other ones I think are um, Christian College is the only one from this past season, and then uh, one of the first Does that episodes. Count, though? Christian College, yeah. Christian College. That's just like a phrase people say. It's not really like alliterative. It's alliterative. Like okay. technically, it's alliterative, but okay, yeah. So, so the other one, on I just. Uh, <laughs> the, the, you're just mad because you're losing the, uh, the other the other one was like one of the first ones it was sports similes slash uh, or sorry, excuse me it was sermons slash sports similes was the other one now that's uh, alliteration <laughs> all right so, so how many what's score check lily how many you have um 
Seven. Okay, and Chris has? Three. Okay, so you need this, Chris. So this is... <laughs> yeah, worth, I do. This is worth five points, so you could do it. Okay. Okay. What is John's subscriber-only show art an acronym for? And I'll give you the last word, okay? The last word is therapy. I already knew the last word. Yeah, the last I word know is that therapy. One. So it's A R T T. Uh, oh, I just saw it too, like literally last week, and I remember being like, "Haha." Oh, that's gonna drive me nuts. A R T T. Last word is therapy. I'll give Why you did you have seconds. to give me the one that I knew? <laughs> The only hint you gave me is the letter I already knew. I'm like, it's the other <laughs> ones that I can't remember. <laughs> 19 seconds. Oh. Five, four, <laughs> three. You never two, said you were timing us, to be honest. One. I know. It's I just mean. decided to. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so I'm going to give Lily a chance to steal. Nothing. I'm going to give Lily a chance to steal. Um, A R T T. A R T T is the acronym. What does it stand for? Last word is therapy. Subscriber only show. I'm just laughing because, like, my subscribers right now are, like, dying. <laughs> like, they know the answer. <laughs> they're, like, screaming. Yeah. A-R-T-T. Meanwhile, your best friends are just yeah. kind of sitting out here going, like, the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay. I didn't a- even know you had a subscriber show. <laughs> <laughs> subscriber show. A, um, subscri- said- a subscriber. All right. <laughs> you said ten, a- ten you seconds. Said- a A R T T, A R T T. I don't think I'm gonna get it, honestly. Um. <clears throat> okay, so <laughs> it stands for amateur religious trauma therapy. Oh, I kind of wow. can't. I can't. I, I kind of can't believe I didn't get that. I know. I, I. It's. Hey, listen. It's tough because if you're not a subscriber and you don't hear the theme song that only subscribers get to hear, Wait. you would never know. <laughs> you have a different theme song. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Do I? But you have to pay five <laughs> bucks a month to know it. Uh. So. No, I'd, I'd rather. I'd rather you pay me five bucks a month. To know here. <laughs> All right. So. So this is your question now, Lily. Okay. <laughs> So oh. there's there's two there's two answers, which means a potential for six points, but each answer is worth three points. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, what holiday was the book released on, and what holiday was the first episode of the podcast released on? <laughs> mm, oh, no. mm, Christmas and Easter. Okay, the book. Bo- which was which? The book was released on Christmas, and then the podcast was released on Easter. All right, that's six points to you. Good job. Unbelievable. You're you're crushing this, Lily. <laughs> yeah, it's destroying me. All right, Chris, you it's might. Sad get this as I one. know that one. Yeah, okay. it really is right, luck see. of this. You might. He might. Wow. I think you'll get this one. This one's worth seven points. Okay. What is the one swear word that John has never censored on the podcast? Damn. That's correct. Seven points. <laughs> yeah. I refuse to censor that word. It's because it's Why not a swear that? word. Damn it. I just don't perceive it as a swear word. I never have and I never it's, will. It's... It- it's in the Bible. It can't be a swear word. It, 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 that's part of it, maybe, but it's just like this this undying like willingness to say damn has like no damn is like I don't know. There's something about that word that to me I'm just like, if you censor that word, where does it stop? <laughs> like then it's like you might as well censor all words because it's just so like uh tame. Like, I, yeah. like I know a lot of people don't view it that way, but I'm just like it's literally everywhere. Like it's not offensive. 
um yeah but whatever that's my own opinion okay it's so this one language right this one would be worth eight points okay so lily you would basically win i think if you get this one correct um but this is a tough one this is a tough one okay how many different microphones has john used since the beginning of the podcast here's your options one two three or four (laughs) first of all the options are silly (laughs) basically saying it's not more than four okay (laughs) like first of all that's bullshit um and there'd be no way I like haven't said this anywhere. So you just have to be like being able to tell the difference in quality of microphones. Two? <clears throat> Chris, you have a chance to steal. Three. <clears throat> None of y'all get the point. I have used no. four different mics. I had a Is it really? Sh- I had a shitty shore mic when I started. Then I uh, had a yeah, headset well, sure. mic. I had a headset mic that I used for a lot of season one. Then on occasion, I realized after an interview that my mic was not plugged in or not selected as a setting. So I used the computer mic. And then this mic I'm using right now is number four. That's cheap, man. The computer (laughs) mic is just like, that's okay. It's four. I don't know what to tell you. It is four. You're right. It's okay, so so Chris, saying, this goes I to knew you. About three of them. <laughs> you can you can make up a lot of ground with this. Okay, so there's three separate. <laughs> I'll never answers. win, but I can make up some ground. The, there's three separate answers for this one. Each one is worth three oh. points. Okay, so nine points are oh, available that to you. Sounds incredibly overwhelming, but go for okay. it. <laughs> so at the end of every single episode, John reminds his listeners to do three things. Can you name them all? Oh. If I wasn't under pressure, probably, but now I'm <laughs> freaking out. Okay. It's so funny because I don't get anything for getting this right. Um, and I'll, I'll, get, I'll give you but, one more hint and just say it is literally like the last line of every episode. Oh, yeah. I, I can hear it. I can hear mm-hmm. the exact tone that you say it with, too. That's what's oh, yeah. getting me. Um, And yet... The words are gone. I mean, let me let me think for a moment here, and you can do your Jeopardy theme song or whatever you but want. How about this? Um, I'll give you I'll give you ten seconds to a hint, and then twenty more seconds after that. Sure. It's all alliterative. That's the thing I remember. Okay, that was my hint. So we'll just go. With, yeah. Like, <laughs> we'll just go with twenty from now. Ah. Uh... Just gonna eat my my delicious blueberry <laughs> I can't think of it. vanilla goat cheese. I'm just thinking about what I'm gonna say when I can't. Think of the <laughs> just like the comedically wrong answer. Oh, uh, yeah. All Pers- right, last oh, chance. Yeah, I got I got nothing. Here. Live, laugh, love, baby. Live, okay. laugh, love. You're not you're not too far off from the first one, but I can't. Give I it know to you. I'm not. So so Lily, go ahead. What do, what do you think are the three things John reminds you to do at the end of every episode? I think that one of them is be kind to one another. Nope, that's wrong. Really? Two more. <laughs> I I would never. Okay. I would never tell people that. To do that. Okay, that just I I feel like I can't hear that in your voice, but whatever. Um. <sighs> Y'all are gonna hate yourself when I say it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I already know I am. I already hate myself because like I can literally hear it. This is embarrassing. I'm so right, annoyed. I'm... <laughs> I, I plan on getting Here y'all drunk and then get putting y'all through trivia. So. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's so mean. I've literally like had too much wine. I like don't remember. <laughs> All right, ten more seconds. Here you go. Um. All I can think of is be kind to one another. Wait. Um... Last chance. There's more than 10 seconds. <laughs> okay, so it okay, is. I got it. I already know. I got I to gotta say it. Okay. Wait, say it. Is it not 
God made you special and he loves you very much. Yes, at the end of every episode, I plagiarize Veggie Tales. No, I, uh, no, here it is. Y'all ready? Keep love in your life, hope in your heart, and hope searching, in your heart and, and searching, searching your soul. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. All right. Okay, last question 10 points. How, first off, score, score, scoreboard. What do we got going on over there, Lily? Um, <laughs> So I have been double checking this just to make sure that my scorekeeping has been accurate because I don't because I've been getting confused when I do like a cross check mark to make five because I'm like wait I already made a mark so I wouldn't lose track of how many each point was worth. I don't care. So just what do you have? <laughs> it looks like um, Chris has ten and I have thirteen. Oh wow, really? close race. Okay, so how about this? Just who? Do y'all want to either... We could do this two ways. We could either do whoever raised their hand first gets a chance to no, answer no, to no, win. No, Or we no, can just give it to Lily. No. And, but, but I, think <laughs> since it's, I think since it's so close, if you don't get it and Chris gets it right, I think we ought to give it to him. How's that sound? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so Lily, here's your, <laughs> chance, to, here's your chance to answer, okay? Final question. John has said repeatedly... That cults control, contain, and convert. He said this a lot in all sorts of podcasts. Why but, are you referring to yourself in the third person? Because it's very funny. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but what is his <laughs> fourth indicator of a cult that he has brought up on several episodes? And there's no options. Just what's his fourth indicator of a cult that's not control, contain, or convert? Contain. It's not any of those. It's not control, contain, or convert. Sorry. There's a fourth, Sorry. fourth thing he says sometimes. I just I decided that you didn't say that. So um hold on. <laughs> 30 seconds. <laughs> Is it gonna be 30 seconds of dead air or are you gonna play Wait. the Jeopardy theme song in the background? <laughs> Does it start with air. a C? Does it start with a C? It is not alliterative, and it's not, like, catchy. It's just, like, a thing he says a lot. That guy. <laughs> that guy, John, Manipulate? Is, it man- is it manipulate? No, not quite. You got about ten more seconds. I don't know why I'm so stressed out. <laughs> this is the point of trivia to right? stress it's like, people it out actually, yes, <laughs> trivia is just stressing us out okay <clears throat> last chance what you got I don't have anything alright Chris your chance to steal and win oh yeah it, I mean, it can I've be got paraphrased nailed them. paraphrased okay. oh even better any Awana equivalent yeah you didn't tell me I could paraphrase it. it could be it could be literally <laughs> any. Is that, is that seriously your final answer? No, that is not my final answer. Okay. I don't think that's your, I don't <laughs> okay. you've ever you've never said that. Um, control, contain, or convert, and then there's a fourth option which I cannot think of, and so I will have to simply hand this win to Lily All and right. accept my failure as a human being. <laughs> I will say Lily deserved this win, so I'm glad she gets the win. Uh, she did. Is very clearly deserved. The answer, and I'm sure y'all will know it as soon as I say it, is a clear distinction between leaders and followers. Oh, That's something yeah. I mention all the time. <laughs> is like a big indicator. But it's not it. catchy, John. It it's just, not, it's not catchy. catchy. Admittedly not catchy. That's why it didn't make the book title. <laughs> but, but that is... <laughs> In my opinion, also, one the, of the the book title is already kind of is already kind of long. To be honest, it could oh. be shorter. Oh. There are longer, um, but uh, but yeah, okay, that was fun. So, <laughs> Lily, congratulations! So, you won trivia. So, would you rather Chris do the first dramatic reading of my hate mail I've received, or would you rather do the first one? No, I want to do it. Fuck that. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put in our little chat here the uh, the one of my Ooh, favorite man. hate mails I've received. Okay, you ready? Mm-hmm. I'm so excited. I'm excited. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's see. 
Wait, so I can, can I put as much can I put as much theater into this as I want? You literally, whatever you need to do. Oh, Hold you're saying, on. Chris? I was just gonna say, John, won't this potentially backfire and result in receiving more hate mail just because people want to be featured on your season finale? I hope so I hope so. I lit. I I gotta be honest. Um, I love hate mail. <laughs> like there, there is no amount of hate mail that like bothers me. Like I just like it is all very funny. Okay, you ready, Lily? Yeah. All Have right, you seen those tweets of like celebrities reading like like rude tweets of yeah. themselves? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny. All right, read it to me <laughs> with the vitriol of this human. Okay. Does it start oh, at no. or does, does it start it at, at the, the quote, quote mark? Yeah, it starts at the quote. Okay. Sorry about yeah. Okay. <laughs> you only talk shit about Christianity, but no other religions like Islam, cause you pussy, and you know they cut you damn head off. <laughs> that is oh. easily. I'm not gonna lie. That's my favorite message I've ever received from a stranger. Like for so they many cut reasons. The typos. They cut the you damn head off. The like, the fact you that they, and the no, fact they that cut they think you damn the head reason, off. The fact that they think the reason I don't talk about Islam is because I'm worried about decapitation <laughs> is so funny to me <laughs> on two counts. One, I'm not worried about decapitation. Two, I have talked shit about Islam before. So it's just like, it's such a like knee jerk, like dumb reaction. Um, Okay, it's these very next, typical. These next two were comments <laughs> on like a uh, an ad I ran for my book back in the day. Chris, you want to read these? Oh yeah, here we go. All right, so these are just two different comments. Um, <laughs> you'll be able to figure out which is which. <laughs> these come through really weird. We got some weird yeah, text in the, here, but I think I get just a bit. Listen, I don't know. all right the the quote here we got two two separate quotes the cult of selling books at the expense of christ (laughs) and then uh we've also got (laughs) the cult against christianity which i think i i think the first one yeah the first one is like depressing like it's just like you really think that you owned him there don't you and the second one though (laughs) like it's got a it's got a a ring to it that i'm like that's a great idea we should start it's kind of awesome the cult against christianity i like it yeah (laughs) cult against christianity it's like okay like i'm not an anti-theist but that sounds kind of badass i'm like all right okay all right (laughs) you you should (laughs) You should see the look on some of my coworkers' faces when I'm like, I've joined two cults. I'll join another. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> well, it's the, the second room. one that gets people. Because if you tell someone you used to be in a cult, they go, oh, damn. But if you tell these people you've been in more than one, then that's when people go, all right. Okay. There was a choice in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Lily, you ready for the, for the next one? Oh yeah. <laughs> this this was another another comment on an ad I ran. I can't remember if it was book or podcast, but this was a comment on a on one of the ads I ran. <laughs> Wait, I have a question. Yes. Um Am I reading the acronym or am I reading the meaning behind the acronym? Well, your choice. Dealer's choice. Oh my god, okay. Artistic license. (laughs) (laughs) Just shut the fuck up, you miserable wet blanket atheist. Get off my feed! uh! (laughs) This is my favorite. Okay. Because it's it's so like, dude, it's an ad. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, Facebook determined you wanted to see this. I absolutely love. I love. Get off my feed. This is like. This is like Ben Shapiro complaining that Twitter <laughs> only shows him liberals in the recommendations. And it's so funny because it's like, my dude, 
you are making that happen. The algorithm yeah, like, literally, is trying to learn yeah. what you <laughs> click on. You made that happen. And this person like, is just so mad. And I'm like, all you have to do is hide the ad and it will never show up again. Just block it. <laughs> He's it's just so personally good. got a vendetta against you. Also, I love the idea of someone calling me a wet blanket atheist because I feel like they're so wrong on every account. Like, I'm every just like, point. I'm well, just no, like, the I'm, only thing, listen, the I, only I, thing's I, accurate here. <laughs> Go ahead. Is, is wet? I could, I, I could, I could. <laughs> I could see John being called a wet blanket. I could see it. What's right. funny is it's very not true. John's more likely to complain everyone else is a wet blanket. He can be <laughs> miserable sometimes. <laughs> and he is on someone's feed. But that's about all that could be construed as accurate. <laughs> I think, John, you don't identify... Do, do you identify as an atheist? No, not at all. Like... I didn't think so, but I wanted to make sure to ask before I was like, John doesn't identify this way. No, I mean, like, I like, and if, I, if someone calls me an atheist, I don't take it as an insult. But like, I sure it's just funny because it's like it's just so they mean it. They mean it as an insult, clearly, but you don't take it that way. Yeah, right. And it's just, I mean, again, it's like even if I was an atheist, like hard stop. It's like it's not like I was always an atheist. Like that's certainly verifiable. Like you can tell. Like no, John was like a serious non-atheist. So this the like miserable wet blanket atheist just picks his, mm -hmm. pictures this like guy who's <laughs> I don't know. It's very <clears throat> funny to me. Uh, it's very funny to me too. Okay, so this last one, Chris, we're going to do some role play. This is the only comment oh, yeah, here we go. where I, like, responded to anyone because I just thought it was very Great. funny. Oh, and this was back back when I first published my book. Um, okay, so, Chris, you have two options. Would you rather be Mike or would you rather be me? Which would oh, you rather I'm be gonna need. I'm going to need to be Mike, man. I, I need okay. to be Mike. Is, is Mike this person's real <laughs> name? Uh, yes, but it's I didn't okay. give a last name. But yes, this is I'm, this was a real man named Mike who decided to I'm just comment curious. on a uh, on an ad for my book. Okay, you ready, Chris? Okay, I'm ready. Right, Chris, I'm ready. Chris is reading for Mike. Mm -hmm. Oh man, this is hard to read. Holy shit! <laughs> Here we go. Wow. Oh yeah, I think I've seen this one before. <laughs> all, all right. Here we go. <clears throat> all right, John. Before I go waste $8 on your book, what is your major premise and principal evidence to support your title's broad brush is certain, making it almost certainly not true? That information is for an elite class of folks, those willing to spend $8. <laughs> That's pretty gutless. I guess you're hoping the title will draw people in. But I don't see anything that recommends this book as anything but a waste of time written by someone with no apparent credentials. <laughs> Good thing. I can't. I'm sorry. It's so funny. <laughs> Good thing no one is forcing you to buy it. Your $8 is probably better spent towards some anger management classes. Shrug emoji. <laughs> and then it, it's the shrug emoji for me. <laughs> funny how you assume i'm angry pretty much anybody can publish a book these days it stands to reason that one would like a little more information credentials other short essays other reliable sources recommending your work and the like i'm not angry but i am a christian intellectual so man up <laughs> oh that's my favorite <laughs> Oh, I'm a it Christian is intellectual. incredible. This is a person. This is a person. I know you're not finished, and I, I, I want you yeah. to finish it. But I just want to comment on the fact that this is a person who opened their statement with, instead of spending eight dollars, the price of a coffee and a bagel, on your book. <laughs> I want to know everything about your book. <laughs> Literally, it's so crazy. So this is my response. Okay. He says, so I, anyway, he says he's a Christian intellectual. So man up. For $5, I'll man up and send you my resume. <laughs> I, see. <laughs> I see you're a trained preacher. Where did you get your training? For $8, you can buy my book and find out. 
<laughs> this is this is literally the only time I've ever responded to someone just because my mind was blown that eight dollars mattered more to this man than anything. Like I was just like, can we please ask all listeners to send Mike eight dollars? <laughs> send yeah, send on- Mike eight dollars. <laughs> he if he apparently yeah. can't. <laughs> If you feel we so motivated, not. please please find this man on John's Facebook reviews and Facebook <laughs> Messenger him eight dollars. We do not condone harassment or doxing, but we do condone right. you finding this Sending comment $8. thread somewhere <laughs> somewhere in the ancient past of the twenty tens. And then uh, find this guy's profile and send him eight dollars. Yeah, please, please don't, <laughs> oh. please don't harass this person. He just like he is short at eight dollars. He just needs He's eight dollars. We do if want him to be able to together. afford John. Yeah, if he wants to buy John's book, <coughs> he wants the information. It shouldn't be held from him on account of funds. It's our He just doesn't want to waste his funds. He doesn't right. want to. And, like, we, we, hey, listen. we gotta, we gotta do it for him. Listen, make no doubt. I, I don't want no one to have any doubts. Mike has eight dollars. He just wants to be careful with that eight dollars. <laughs> like he just he's like, I don't want to spend eight dollars well, think... to find information out that would cost eight dollars. I you just... know what's also incredible. What's also incredible here is that he could have found out half of this information by Facebook. Without paying you. eight dollars. That's what blows my mind. I'm like, literally, if you go to my website, you would find out the answers to half of your questions for free. But you've in your mind said, I'm trying to squeeze eight dollars out of you for you to find out. Like it's almost like he expects that if he bought my book, I would just like. 10 pages in being like haha got you it's not a real book (laughs) you're just like like i'm pulling some sort of prank on him and it's just so funny to me this is very random but i can't believe i've never thought of that you could totally self-publish a book that's like 100 pages of nothing with only two pages at the beginning of the book and sell it for like five bucks a piece i actually don't know want to start that grift i actually don't know anything about self-publishing I just it's, assume uh, that you have to send your stuff away to someone that's like, yeah, your stuff should be published. No, it's even less. I mean, he's right that anyone can publish any book. It's just funny that he's like using that as a way to say, I still want to know about what you're saying, <laughs> like, but yeah. I don't want to pay for it. Like, it's like, well, then what do you want me to do? Like, it was just like, it was like he was almost asking for a free book. And I'm like, it's like, bro, <laughs> like, Literally, literally this week, one of my jobs is that I work at Starbucks. And this week, like, there was a customer who was trying to pay on an app that was not a Starbucks app. Oh, those are my and, favorite people. And so we, and so someone was just like, he was in the drive through and he, like, couldn't, he had to, like, come into the store to resolve this. And he was like, we had to tell him, like, okay, like, uh, we can't accept this as a form of payment. We need to have you call corporate. And he was like, I need to call them later. Like, I'll do it. And I'm like, okay, well, if you have another form of payment, he was like, this isn't my problem. <laughs> You're like, hey, well, customers sir- are wild. Your lack of coffee might be your problem later. John, but, uh, John, like every shift that I have at Starbucks, I like want to text you about the other customers at Starbucks and just be like, "Do it!" Oh like, man, <laughs> you know what I'll say? I'll just be like, "What the fuck?" Like that's literally like every time you have texted me about a customer, I'm like, "What on God's green earth are they doing?" It's, Lily, it's so wild. <sighs> Off air, Lily, you and I are gonna have to share. We're just gonna have to swap barista <laughs> stories for a little bit because Wait, the things that people think they can do. Well, no, you know, I never worked Chris, at Starbucks. <laughs> you know what? what Chris does, right? Like, what is? Yeah, what do, you, do you know what I do? I actually, I probably haven't told, but I forgot what. Oh yeah, so I I am a I am a assistant manager in a. It's a weird like conglomeration of jobs, but I work in the retail department at a casino out here. So okay. that retail department, actually I started as a barista. And so okay. half of our venues are coffee shops and then the other half are like actual retail stores. Got um, it. So I run around between four places and spend about three quarters of my time making coffee for tweakers. <laughs> it, it, it's know- made for some, gr- coffee for some tweakers. great stories. 
Uh, yep. My um, my that, partner, amazing. my partner works in works on surveillance at the casino out here. No way. Yeah. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh what a what a life. There's just the, the amount of stories he must have. That's that's. <laughs> Yeah. Truly. Oh. Look at so all like, <laughs> I'm just, There is I'm nothing very... like a casino. Like, no, I know they're wild. The especially topic, especially like... Spokane. Like, Spokane has its own oh, yeah. of, like, casinoers, we're too, at, that are just we're wild. We're at Snoqualmie, so it's, like, pretty uh, much yeah, the too. same. Yeah. I mean, let's just say the, the, the Pacific Northwest, like, the Washington Pacific Northwest. casinos. They there's just, they, there's, there's truly something unique about every person there and it's not that they're all bad or like there's anything like negative to say about all of these people it's just that like even the good ones you're just like this is different <laughs> like the, the environment totally. makes me sad though it oh, like yeah. it's, it's it's not my jam yeah, yeah. i've it took it took me years to adjust to it and there's only certain yeah. parts of the environment that i feel comfortable in the uh, yeah. the slot machines I d- do not that's not my not my thing. I just do not see the fun there at all. There's it's a resort casino, so there's a ton to do. There's a lot of people who are there doing other stuff, um, and it's a really cool property that I work on. But like, yeah, the uh, <laughs> the the gambling side of things is definitely a, a, a moral quandary for me at times. Um, the, <laughs> well, the one good thing I can yeah. say is that it's a native owned casino, and that most of the people throwing their money away are white people, so it kind of yeah. feels good. <laughs> <laughs> but there's also <laughs> the one sense of restoration among the, all the, the chaos. One, the, the one, the one time that America did reparations was on accident when they accidentally <laughs> gave a bunch of Native American tribes millions of dollars by gambling. Man, true, totally. For oh. me, it's, so, it's not like the moral quandary. It's like there's like so much sensory overload, and it seems oh, like yeah. there's so much. It seems like there's so much anxiety and depression in the air in general. Yeah, you get it from the team members just as much as the um, like the people on property, like who are playing. I also get like yelled at like for the thing, most. Like... I also get yelled at for the most random things. Like it's so annoying. They're like, you can't text over here. You can't stand behind this person. You can't lean your stuff on this table. And I'm like, really? Okay. It was so annoying. Casinos like, I went... are very like regulated. It's so I would say. yeah, it's so annoying. I'm like, all right, I guess I'm just gonna go like text that, by the bathroom. Though. That's yeah. so interesting. Huh? Okay, yeah, we'll have to but... we'll have to chat about this like, more later. I'm very curious to hear stories. Yeah, but yeah. anyway, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, no. Bo- bottom line is, uh, the customer is always wrong, no matter mm-hmm. whether that they is very are true. in a casino or whether they are looking at an ad and feel compelled to comment on it, uh, <laughs> which is very funny to me. All right, so that's that's the end of hate mail. I have received more occasionally, but those were my favorite ones. Um, feel free to send it in. If you hate me, let me know because it's funny. It's funny to me. Um, what I do have now, which I think is very fun, is I have three different clips, but they're not clips from my podcast. I've always wanted to do like a clip show because I just love clip shows because they're insane. <laughs> Um, but like all of, if I was to do a clip show for the cult of Christianity, it would be like, so like somber and like not fun. So I was like, well, how would I, how could I incorporate some clips, um, into something that is fun? And I was like, well, sometimes I've left recording on when there's been oh, no. and stuff like that but also before we get into that, I also wanted to say that, uh, you and me, Chris, for a while, we took about 10, 11, 12 takes of an anchor ad once upon a time on your oh, very first no. episode you did with me. I don't have them all, <laughs> but I selected my favorite failed at anchor ad takes and edited them together. <clears throat> and I'm going to play them now, and hopefully this works, but I think y'all should be able to hear this Um where I, where I, where we tried, we didn't script any of the ad work we did. We no, just tried we tried to do not. some anchor ads. So this one, I think it's about three minutes of just you and I trying to do uh, an anchor ad. So enjoy. <laughs> hey, Chris. What's up, John? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to uh, sail on a boat? Not particularly, man. It makes me seasick. 
oh, well, have I got a thing for you if you don't like the sea and are getting sick from it? <laughs> it's an anchor. No know. way, dude. <laughs> Is that how anchors work? Don't they, don't they, don't they stop you from getting sick of the repetitive uh, hassle of podcasts? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've heard anyway. Oh yeah, I've heard that anchors are a perfect anecdote. <laughs> are a perfect anecdote to crummy pa- uh podcast distribution uh to use a nautical metaphor. I'm going to throw up. Wait. Anecdote or antidote? You know, a little bit of both. <laughs> no way. Do you have yes, anecdotal wait. evidence? Oh, I have anecdotal <laughs> evidence. <laughs> Amazing anchor, it's free. Oh, it gets and worse. There's creative tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast. God. If you think that I'm going to just start singing. <laughs> well, why? When I, I can't help it when I see Anchor but to break out into song because you can make money from Anchor with no minimum listening. <laughs> so you're telling me that if I make a podcast that's just me talking to the ether, Anchor will still pay me? Yeah, and you can do it right from your phone or computer. Oh, that sounds really convenient. Not only is it convenient, it's I love that this sounds great. like me just being like cut out of conversations and spliced in. A long, in. long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Etc. Um, there was Anchor. Did you know that? Anchors actually existed before the foundation of the world. Dude, I honestly didn't know that. And I also was really concerned that this recording was going to get sued by Lucasfilm. Hey, Lucasfilm can <laughs> try to sue me, but you know what they can't do? What? They can't distribute your podcast for you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John. Yes, Chris. I've been trying to figure out how on earth I can make a platform for my podcast. Have you heard of anything useful? You know, I don't know anything about making a platform, but I do know about using someone else's platform. (laughs) Oh my fucking god. Well, that's good, because as a white man, I've been trying to figure out how I can make sure that my voice is heard, and I can't figure out who to use. Well, listen, if you're a white man and you want to start your podcast, go to anchor.fm to get started. Or you could download the free Anchor app. You can record your shitty white opinions on your phone. (laughs) And it's completely free for you to do as a white person. Uh, And Anchor will distribute, just to be clear, Anchor will distribute your podcast, even if you're not white. Um, And they will pay you at least as much as they pay white people. Uh, with no minimum listenership, it's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. <laughs> I, feel I don't see why you didn't use that one. <laughs> well, don't feel uncomfortable. Download the free Anchor app to get started. Especially when you say "don't feel uncomfortable." <laughs> <laughs> don't feel uncomfortable. Oh man, dude! The oh, first no. time that was way worse than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> the first time. Oh. I said you could record your shitty white opinions <laughs> and then just roll with it. And then, like, there's just silence from you until you chime in with, I feel really uncomfortable. <laughs> it's, like, the funniest thing to me. Oh, man. It is funny how many takes it took to get us. And then now in season two, two I don't use any of it. I don't any use of any it. of yeah. it. But we spent easily an hour just recording bullshit ads for both Anchor and my book. And well, they're, it's they're all so funny. We were not, we refused to take it seriously, which is how we got such gold. Um, right, right, right. But it did take a long time as a result. <laughs> Because I was like, I can't use this. I don't even say half I, the I copy. Can't, like, I'm like, I can't. I can't say. I'm pretty sure that Anchor will still let you upload your podcast if you're not white. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that Anchor might have an issue with that as an uh, advertisement. 
but too good, you know, too good. what do no, I know? No, no way. <laughs> but Lily, uh, Chris is not the only one who has said some silly things uh, while recording. Oh, here so, we go. <laughs> way back when we did the patriarchy episode, we took an uh-huh. ad break. I do recall. The, and the conversation got absurd. And it's actually like the full <laughs> the full break would be like 15 minutes plus. But I edited it down to five minutes of just the oh, funniest moments yes. from that ad break of the patriarchy the episode. Five, a full five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, enjoy. I'm very thankful <laughs> y'all um, were here. Are you ready for the yuckiest part of this podcast? We're going to make you cry so much. I know. I'm going to be <laughs> muted. I'm going to like chime in every like 10 minutes with like a question while I'm crying and then I'll mute again. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah. I'm so excited to make John cry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh <laughs> it's, you you clearly have been friends with me uh, the least amount of time because Sierra and Amelia have seen me cry plenty. No. I've made him yeah. cry plenty. <laughs> Are you oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it's actually it's it's kind of ironic because like um I mean maybe I can joke about it with like some of John's old friends, but like you know he's he's very prickly against like astrology and like stereotypes, which is whatever. But I'm like, you're such a Cancer Moon, OMG. I'll just give him some time. I for forever was like, John, you're a four on the Enneagram. I know that you can't put everyone in a box, but can you just read this so you can? Like, I know. Understand? I'm like, it's so and now funny. he's like, I'm a four. <laughs> He's literally, he's literally telling me like, "Oh, I'm a double cancer, and I'm such a sad boi." Lies. I'm like, lies. I'm like, lies. LOL, LOL, lies. LOL, 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 LOL. Lies. You're saying lies. What? I'm, ta- I'm Taurus. He's a Taurus. 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 Yeah. Oh, he's a double Taurus. Yes. Oh, that's why he's so stubborn about not wanting to cry. I see. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> that makes no sense. But you're entitled to your own beliefs. <laughs> We love you, and we won't make you. I'm also it's a double just... <laughs> No, it's good. I I resent you now, so I'm not gonna cry at all. It's gonna be <laughs> shut that shit down. Thanks for correcting me, Amelia. I need to know. Can you send me his birth chart? Actually, <laughs> I don't know what time he was born. John, what time you were born? Hey, can you message his mom and ask? Can you it's just, a, can you no, it, y'all, y'all research random things about me to your heart's desire. I, uh, I just need to talk. To I was born at like, I was born to six at six thirty a.m. in Decatur, Georgia. Let me write this down. Yeah. I was born at six nineteen. <laughs> you cannot hey, be on any dating app. Good time to be born. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going. I'm going to take my shirt oh my off, God. and then we'll start. <laughs> Section. Amelia if would John's say gonna that, take his shirt off, I'm gonna take my shirt you. off. <laughs> Tits, out Tits out for Jesus. Tits out for Jesus. Tits out for Jesus. <laughs> Tits out for Jesus. Dicks out for Harambe and buttholes out for uh, uh, me. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> <anyways. laughs> That's the thing is people like <laughs> finding your buttholes. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Wait, Wait finding what? your butthole? I was just what? Like trying to get exposure to the sun on your butthole. It's like a oh, whole thing, yeah. right? Yeah, oh, no, you have to like yeah. pull your cheeks apart so that it tans evenly. Yeah. Yeah. It's harder to pull out your butthole though because it's concave, right? Wait, we're trying to get your butthole. Concave. I, I remember when I found out about pink socking, and that was a whole different thing. And that's when I found out that you can pull your butthole out. Yeah, this is like easily my least favorite topic of conversation. So uh, <laughs> I, have, I have addressed that specific thing more times than I wish I knew about it. Uh, good lord. Okay, ready to talk about patriarchy again? No. Uh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's a. That's a. This is a hard. This is a hard left turn. <laughs> wow, it's pretty. It's pretty well, I need. A, I really need another hit. I'm gonna mute myself. Jesus. Yes. No. Do do what you need to do. I had like literally four smoking more shots, marijuana so during the podcast great. episode. Oh, you had four more. <laughs> yeah. Well, no wonder you're gonna cry. Maybe asleep. 
that's just that's just that's just called breakfast i don't know what y'all are talking about that's, no that's no that's called just, who was that. doing that for poor right by the mic that was me <laughs> That was for you. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm gonna like. I'm just the whole podcast is gonna be uploaded, and it's just like a loop of that noise. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. Oh my god, I'm so dead. I'm so dead. Was that her anyway. actual pour? Yeah, so Amelia literally just poured like a glass of wine right by the mic, and I thought it was the funniest thing in the world. And I am really tempted to just upload an hour and a half of just for pouring that. Oh, Do you man. have any so recordings was... <laughs> of me popping corks? Because I feel like I've popped a cork in front of the mic at least once. I don't know. I would have to search. Um, I would no, have to search. From now on, I'm going to off air, but before, <laughs> like after you start recording, but off air, I'm going to start popping corks and cracking open cans like next to the mic so that you can save it for the next, like, uh, <laughs> the next one of these little things here. You can compile it you all mean, together. In the, in the great words of our leader, Eminem, cr- crack a bottle. Make a body wobble. Yes, yep, absolutely. exactly. It is funny to me that like, so patriarchy, I, I will say to date is still probably my favorite episode just because like. That was a good ass episode. <clears throat> yeah, just yeah, like if a, I'm going to recommend. What a piece of work there. You guys just rocked it. Yeah, if Thank I'm going to just recommend one episode for someone to listen to, like, I feel like that's a solid wow. like. And it's also like the only podcast that's had three guests. So it was a lot to manage just like from a recording editing standpoint but like it was super well done by by all three ladies and uh just really proud of it but it's very funny in the midst of a very serious heavy episode like the audience wouldn't know until now that there was just this huge moment of comic relief of just nonsense in the middle of it um it's very dear to my heart uh the i have one more go ahead I was just gonna say, like, I, I think, like, it partially like came naturally, and we also needed it. Yeah, <clears throat> oh, yeah. it was definitely then, a need. Yeah, yeah. And then I also told I told John like later that after listening to that particular episode, um, I very much had the feel, <clears throat> at least to me as a listener perspective, of feeling like um, Lily, Sierra, and Amelia were all having a conversation, like, almost like a fireside chat, and then John was kind of Mm -hmm. like a, a spectator on that. Um, Which is what I wanted, you know, like, I didn't want to dominate the conversation, like, I was like, listen, like, I have my opinions about the patriarchy, but, like, so what? Like, I'm like, I want to hear from my friends who, like, have, like, uh way more valid opinions so it was just it was really hap- I'm, I'm just happy that it came about and that i get to claim it as something that uh came out of my podcast so i'm very i would actually happy love it. to do another episode with um sierra or amelia and or Samelia or <laughs> Samelia. 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 <laughs> Samelia. <And> or- <laughs> Samelia. <laughs> Just like like you, either one of them or both of them, like I would love to talk to them again on air. That'd be fun. Well, maybe maybe next season. Do um, it. I do. <laughs> I do have one more clip, and I'm not gonna lie. This is going to be at Chris's expense. Um, so y'all know what earworms are, right? Like where you just like have like you listen to something and you just cannot get it out of your head. Like it plays on repeat. Oh, I thought you it was know what I'm talking about. Like- I thought it was literally well. There's, a, there's an insect called yeah, earwig, not not like a went. literal earworm, but like a like yeah, metaphor. Yeah, okay, earworm. Just like the it cannot get out of your head. So like obviously, Damn. I record these, I edit these, <clears throat> I listen to them back once they're distributed to make sure nothing bad happened in the distribution. So like I listen to my voice more than anyone, which is the worst. But I also listen to like my yeah, guest voice be. a lot. And so, like, I listen to all these things, and so certain phrases from certain episodes will just, like, pop in my head while I'm, like, making a sandwich or in the shower or whatever. Like, I'll just hear it on repeat. But 
of all the earworms from my podcast that have come about, there's one from season one, episode six, manipulative music that I will have in my head all the time to the point where I started orchestrating music to it. Oh, and no. so oh. this is oh, uh, this is a clip from manipulative music by Chris Laux with a phrase that I could never get out of my head. And I'm so glad I got the opportunity to uh, have time to mess around with it. So <clears throat> enjoy. Uh, I call I'm this terrified. one pounding. Or, you know, it, it's less about, you know, the typical like, you know, love songs or, or party music or whatever it is. And there's, you know, something more about for, for whatever it might be, the, the meaning of life or their connection with God or the divine or um, sometimes more political issues or whatever it is. Like those are the ones that really connect with me. I'm going to, I'm going to be drawn to those songs. And I, I, I think that that's, just been pounded into me 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 just been Pounded into me, 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 just been pounded into me since the very beginning. Damn, that was good. That was really <laughs> good. Some, some good work right there. That's uh, <clears throat> I hate that was you. Kinda sick. Uh, that was kind of sick. But also really sick. good. I love the that. Piano, that was, the piano. The piano was, the piano was a nice touch. Yeah, that was <laughs> stunning. Um, actually, I love that. Can I can I can I download that? Uh, yeah. go to Will my that SoundCloud. be made available? <laughs> subscribers <laughs> only. Uh, be uh, be <laughs> the thing that's just subscribers only. Oh, uh, it's my literally. I can't tell you how many times I've just been like doing my thing in the shower and just just been pounded into me. Will just be like in my head on repeat because I'm just like. I have to really? say, I have to say, like when I listen to Chris's episode. Like the manipulative music, I did enjoy it, but I do specifically remember him saying "pounded into me," <laughs> and I do remember listening to that, thinking, "Huh, that's a weird <laughs> sexual tension. That's a weird sexual tension to add to this." <laughs> just well, you know into how I am. I just yeah. gotta always. You know, I get, I get, I get into a good interview, and I'm like, you know, it's spice this up. It's just a little <laughs> sprinkle, maybe a little, just like a quarter teaspoon of sexual tension. Throw in a little. <clears throat> Listen, Chris, it's just been pounded. I might be it's adding a... into you. It's been pounded into me since childhood. <laughs> it's been... Listen, listen, it was pounded into you, and now it's pounded into my spank bank. It'll be pounded into all of us. Like all Enjoy. of us. Like, That's all I yours. really <laughs> hope that tomorrow morning someone wakes up going, just been pounded into me. Just been pounded into me. Just been pounded into me. The thought that my voice saying those words could become an earworm <laughs> in anyone's head that I do not know. That makes me happy, makes actually. Me question everything. <laughs> the fabric that of actually, reality. That actually I'm fills me with a lot of joy. I'm genuinely abhorred by that. That feels uh, like a lot of joy that I didn't know I would have. No, yeah, I, I, I feel like, nothing. I can't decide if right I love now. it or hate it. Yeah. <laughs> but I figured you would have that reaction. I was like, Chris is either going to love this or absolutely hate this, and I don't care because either way is great. <laughs> yeah, try both. <laughs> well, yeah, best of both worlds. I'm good with it. All right, guys, it's been fun. This is like. Uh, approaching two hours if not over two hours at this point so we yeah, what call time it is quit. it for you it is almost 2 a.m where i live um right. so 
here's what we can look forward to. Um, first off, if you're if you're a fan and you've listened to all of this, first off, what's wrong with you? But secondly, uh, send me you know via Instagram or or my website or whatever what you want for next season. I I do read what people say about my podcast, and I I love to incorporate what the audience Clearly. wants after. After all, this is this is clearly um, after all this, this is as much for you as it is for me. So um, what to expect next? I'm going to take one month off uh, for sure, which means no Cult of Christianity podcast, no parsing propaganda, no amateur religious trauma therapy. All that is done for May. Uh, but starting in June, there will be some subscriber-only content. I haven't decided how that's going to look. So if you subscribe, go ahead and send me what you want. And I will either continue one of those two shows, if not both, or I'll do something else entirely. But feel free to reach out and tell me what you want. Um, but I'm really excited. Uh, season three of The Cult of Christianity will happen eventually. Um, my guess is by Christmas. I like releasing shit on holidays, so hopefully it'll yeah, be ready do. by December 25th, <laughs> um, if not sooner. Uh, Chris, Lily, anything y'all want to say before we get out of here? Um, it's been fun, and thanks for putting up with us. <laughs> oh, putting up with? Y'all made the show. Shut up. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Uh, well, you're welcome then. <laughs> You should totally follow me at Sweet Words Witch. Uh, oh, yeah. Or Insta. On... If you scroll back far enough, there's a picture of her in a bikini. Yeah, it's like <laughs> I I have I I I actually received a message from an old an old coker that said that a friend of his messaged him saying that he could see the outline of like my vola or some shit. Jesus. Amazing. <laughs> So like I asked him. Incredible. So like I asked him for this person's name and immediately blocked him. So please let me know. So please let me know if I need to block you. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) In all all Um, seriousness, your Instagram is filled with amazing stuff, and I'm not trying to be dumb. I'm just saying, like, uh, I I tried to put some good shit like on my stories at least. Yes. 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 Very, very good. Chris is anti-social media, and I support him. Yeah, in that, you can so follow me you. nowhere, and if you try <laughs> to find me, then you can get fucked. Um, yes, literally. Just kidding. I, I'm not actually like my wife has literally gone dark. Sierra is just gone. Like she deleted everything and yeah, I miss her. And she's actively, she's actively <laughs> deleting anything that refers to her on the internet, which I think is badass. I am not yeah. that committed because, as I've told everybody off air. I really like lurking, so I don't exist on social media, but but I still see people on social media. I'm watching. I just will ignore you if you try to contact me or friend me. Gotcha. So don't so, try to follow so, me. Leave me alone. Right. Follow and... follow Lily on Instagram if you want more content and know that Chris is watching you. I think those are good. <laughs> Chris is watching. I think those are follow... good parting words. <clears throat> follow Remember me for that my Chris and the NSA are always watching. <laughs> Always. Yeah, and then Always. and then follow but, Lily for her for her Lily. like mental health uh, counseling student journey slash bullshitting and shit posting yes, journeys. Yes. Hell yes. yeah, do it. Actually, yes. though, because Lily's an awesome person, you should follow her and get to know her better. And I should and I should post a lot of really great content too. So there's that. Well, is there anything great better content. than some shit posting though? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming on. Thank you guys for listening. This has been very fun for me. It's nice to let loose. Uh, I will be back for season three. I'm sure these characters will be back as well. Uh, Thank you so much. I love y'all. And I will talk to y'all soon. If you wish to learn more about what's going on in my life, or wish to purchase my book, go to thecultofchristianity.com. If you'd like to support this podcast, please continue to listen, follow, share, and consider subscribing for additional content. For only five bucks a month, you'll have access to two additional shows, Parsing Propaganda, where I review and critique Christian content, and Art, where we try some amateur religious trauma therapy. Every subscriber becomes a part of something bigger than this podcast as we endeavor to hold churches accountable, speak the truth boldly, and most importantly, love others despite our pain. Thank you for listening, and remember to keep love in your life, hope in your heart, and searching in your soul.